you, it's almost like you're immersing yourself in a world of pure action. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> that is true. And it makes you just like want to go, go do something. You're like, ah, fuck, he's doing something every day. I got to go do things. Thou is ready. I'm ready. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Yay Sayers podcast, where we, we say yes to success. <laughs> and by that, I mean we read books and we take insightful learnings from them and then chat a little bit about it. Uh, as always, I am blessed with my guest, ble- I guess blessed by my guest, and my, my guest being my co-host, uh, Priya. Priya, hello, how are you today? hello. I'm doing all right. I love this little intro that you've put together on this. Hey, you spot. like this? It's fantastic. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just I'm going for it. I'm 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 feeling my inner. Uh, what is it? What's what's the guy? Uh, Howard Stern. I feel like you know. Let's just go yeah. for it. Oh wow! I had no idea I'd be recording with Howard Stern. I cut my hair though. That's the that's the thing. You know the 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 big. The big yeah. ball of hair is gone. The sunglasses. I also You're shrunk. You're not doing the big curly hair. No, not anymore. Sadly, no. And uh, I moved. I moved from New York. He's in New York, right? Is that where he is? He's a... Seems like he might be. I feel like he's a New York guy, but you know, I guess that that's a nice little segue. Also, hi everybody, Alex. You know, hey, hi. Hey, hey, this is, hey. This is what episode three, right? So episode Alex, three. Priya, you guys probably know by now. I hope so. And if not, Alex. Priya. And Priya. <laughs> there you go. That's great. <laughs> but another New Yorker that we can talk about for a little bit, and that, that is the uh, actually the topic. Uh, yeah, I know. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that segue. Let's segue into the, our, our, our buddy, Mr. Anthony Bourdain, with his book, Kitchen Confidential. Now, I have read this book, I think, four times. I've read this book so many times. I this love so this book. This is so unfair. We need I to know. choose a book for the next episode that you have not yet read. I understand. I understand. And you know what? You can say no. Every time we pick a book, every time we pick something, you can always say no. Uh, I just make a suggestion. I go, I liked this book. And you go, yeah, let's do that. And like, I'm like, okay, it's cool. Like your suggestions are pretty good. So Yeah. You know, I mean, this book is, this book is a little bit, uh, a little bit raunchy at times. It's a little rough around the edges, I would say. Um, I as like a, a little as, rough around the edges though. Yeah. I mean, I was, I was actually a little concerned. Like, I didn't know how, how, like, I don't know what your taste is pertaining to stuff like that. So, um, so Alex and I, obviously we've, we known each other for a bit, but not a long bit. So hmm. that's interesting that you're like, Oh, is she going to be okay with this or not? Well, were you? Yeah. Oh, yeah okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. So like, what did you get as like the, the, like the general idea of this book, I would say personally, like for people that don't understand or don't know this book, uh, Kitchen Confidential by Anthony Bourdain, uh, it's uh, how I, I wrote it. it was in an, an authentic deep dive into the culinary industry in the late 20th century. How do you feel about that? I think that's very accurate. Um, I know for our, for our show, what we like to do is to um, almost like Again, like we use the word dissect and then we don't and then sometimes we do, but it's a good word to pull in. Um, kind of like dissect or chop to use uh, culinary terms, like mm-hmm. chop into okay. sort of stories of um, people who have been successful in some way, yeah. shape or form uh, in their chosen path and try to understand why and sort of like the different points along the path that led to their success. So I think you know, this being, this is a deep dive kind of into culinary culture. Um, and that seems very much like what the book is about from, you know, the premise, how he introduces it to also what he covers. But I think since it's written, you know, in his voice and he's writing about his experience, you also get to learn about him when you're reading the book, what he's like, how he approaches his work, how he fell in love with food, why he does what he does, sort of the, you know, the, you get a sense of him and his personality and his likes and dislikes or loves and hates more like for Anthony Bourdain, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. And the fun, I think the interesting part about it, it is a personal memoir within the culinary industry. Um, But what's, what's really interesting, especially pertaining to like our own show of how we want to dive into people that are successful um, this book is the reason he is successful. This book is yeah. the reason he is a household name for many. 
Um, so it, it's just very interesting to see. This is this is a very raw approach, a prior to fame approach and look into somebody's life to give them an idea of how that set them up for this next chapter of their life. I, I, it's just, And I'm wondering, maybe we can even start there because like, I think that okay. already kind of touches on, um, on some, uh, uh, on some tensions that we face when we're sort of doing what we think is the right thing for us to do. So, you know, in reading a little bit about Anthony Bourdain, um, and, uh, obviously I, you know, I know about him before I've never read the book before this was my first time. Um, and I think I'd seen a couple of his shows here and there, but mm -hmm. not like religiously. Um, but I do find him very interesting and I always have, uh, especially as I love travel documentaries and docu-series. And that was like one of his big, you know, big projects that he did a couple of times over and over. Um, but even just like learning about, I didn't know before that he, that this book made him famous. And um, it's interesting because, you know, he knew that this book would probably ruffle feathers, but at the same time, he felt like he needed to write it and he wanted to write it. Um, and I remember he talks about how he would, you know, he was working as a chef then and he would wake up uh, several hours early every morning, light a cigarette and then just start writing. Um, but I think that kind of speaks to this first idea where sometimes you like you're sort of being pulled in a certain direction or you're sort of being called to do something and you know it's going to ruffle feathers. So that's like the choice that you have to make. Am I going to follow through with this and do it? Or do I not want to ruffle feathers or do I not want to cause controversy? But I think we probably have to agree that most people who end up reaching some sort of heights in their career, they take those points and follow through on those sort of like tension points where they could have stopped and been like, no, this is going to, I mean, he even says like writing this book, he feels like it's going to jeopardize his career. People yeah. might not want to hire him again because of how revealing it is about the yeah. industry and, and the culture. Um, but that's very interesting. Even the step to, to write and to publish this was kind of a, uh, an, uh, almost an unknown. He didn't know what he would get out of it. He almost got the opposite of what he was expecting in some ways, which is actually actual success. Right. Yeah. It's very interesting because it is like that is like one of the final things that he says in the book. It's just like, you know, I, this, this is going to be a, a telltale of like my my bosses of whether or not they are a true fans of the industry, if they can me or not. And they he didn't get canned. He just became a public icon. Like, you know what I mean? It was it, it was very just by doing and telling his own story and kind yeah. of revealing those open things and being authentic. And I think that's I think that's the number one thing that I really, really appreciate about this book and why I like it so much is because there is so much authenticity. There's it, it is such a negative, maybe not negative is the best word, but it's a it's a grueling accurate. environment, an accurate and yeah, grueling environment that they're the and portrayal of this of this industry. Um, something that you don't necessarily or I would have nef never ne necessarily known about prior to reading this or being exposed to this in that way. And I, I believe a lot of people, other than if they had people like either worked in it or knew people within the industry. Um, so it's just very interesting to, to, to just kind of, I, I don't know, uh, be that authentic with yourself and with the world and how well that that translates, because it is somebody that uh, you can you can directly relate to to some point again being that this man it, I think when he when he finally published it I think he was in his 40s like late 30s early 40s that was inspiring to me as well because that's another thing where and some of the the other so we've covered Matthew McConaughey and we've covered Mindy Kaling and I think both of them found success uh I, again I put that in quotes but both of them reached some sort of uh, um achieved some goals in their careers well before they were, yeah. they had reached the 40 mark. So yes. to learn that this book was actually released when he was a little bit older, um, I actually found quite inspiring. Yeah. Yeah, it really yeah. is. It's very, it's very neat to get. And it also is like, I, I personally respected the man being that like he did have his full life essentially like not a full life, but he had 
he had 40 years of his life that he, he put put down and if not more um uh, I, I see you Bria. <laughs> yeah I, what are you, you see my oh no 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 i thought no. never mind i said full life and then I, I go 40 years and then i'm like oh wait priya's like 30s <laughs> and i was like i don't want to i don't want to offend like at all um I but it's but you feel like you're walking on eggshells when i i didn't even think about i, I know were, i, I know what if me pulling out my book i've no 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 <laughs> No, I'm just like I don't. I'm like I'm. I am walking at X. I was like I don't want to offend. I don't want to say anything that's rude. Okay, okay. Um, here I got something for you. What would Anthony Bourdain do? I, he wouldn't give a shit. He'd probably call me. <laughs> he'd probably call me some really rude name and then like uh, then tell me to get back to work. I don't know. Uh, at least that Anthony Bourdain, the the, the most recent yeah. Anthony Bourdain. I actually I, I would recommend. Oh no, go for it. Oh, yeah, no, I was just going to say that you, I mean, you just like flowed right into something else that stood out to me from the book. And this is something that I mentioned to you a couple of days ago when we were chatting, mm -hmm. which was there's a chapter in here that says that's about a day in his life, mm -hmm. you know, when, as, as a chef. And uh, it's, of course, a crazy, crazy long day. Um, and uh, it just kind of stood out to me how much he accomplishes or accomplished like in one day versus mm -hmm. again, I was thinking about like the average, the average person for lack of better words. Um, but <laughs> he seems to do so much more in one day than like a lot of us do in a month, which yeah. is, is like mind blowing to me, like the dedication and the drive to his kind of craft. Um, but it's like ridiculous so by the time you're 40 and you've been putting in that many full days into what you do it almost is like living a full life at least when it comes to the career side of things for him I don't yeah know the other yeah, sides right there obviously was a mix of different things going on with his life yeah whether it be drug abuse or I, i'm i more or less felt bad for his wife to be honest if he's yeah. working that many hours I'm yeah. very like good on her for sticking around that much. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that must have been a rough, rough situation to to yeah. to deal with overall. Which also is a thing that's shed light on. You know, a lot of these people, even like he, there was a chapter in the book where he talked to one of his bosses, um, and was like, "Hey, I got a girlfriend. I have I barely ever see her." And the guy's like, "I don't see my wife either, and we love each other, and blah blah blah." blah. And then he ends up like. Yeah, I, I think he ended up killing her or something like it was a whole thing yeah i don't know if you got to that part of the book yet i, I, but, I did not yeah not that yeah. part tell, tell so, us more about that um i, I the, it might have been like she killed him or he killed her i don't remember but like they there was there was an incident that happened like after like and he said that like recently after uh, like very close after he made the comment about like how his boss said that to him so it was like a kind of like a thing of like this is the industry these people work fucking 24 hours a day and they don't have an outside life if they don't like really push for it uh and it's a so how do you like, what do you feel about that like what are your thoughts on that uh, do, doing the doing the um the startup life uh for a little while like the hardcore startup life um i i don't envy it i don't envy it at all uh, there's no part of me that really enjoys the like. I don't know. It's it's kind of like. It's kind of. I guess it's kind of like the arm. Like I guess armed forces or like a, a brotherhood type of thing where it's like you're all in it together. You know, I kind of and got that vibe actually, which is interesting. There were a few moments where he talked about um, some women who he works with, especially like line cooks. I think he mentioned he really likes women line cooks. Yeah. Um, but aside from that, it's a very, very male dominated industry. Yes. And so it really, it reminded me of like, maybe this is one of the reasons you weren't sure how I would take this book, but it reminded me of like the boys club that you see in the startup world where, mm -hmm. you know, at the top or in the founder circles, traditionally, I think it is getting a lot better, but traditionally it's just like a bunch of dudes and, you know, living their dude life like <laughs> to the world kind of like kind of like what you kind of like kitchen confidential kind of like what it portrays about a kitchen so yeah. i found that to be very it was interesting to me um 
it very, yeah, definitely very, very testosterone heavy, which is what he says, you know, that kind of, that kind of life. Um, so I'm interested in kind of how, mm, how that came to be, but also maybe how that's evolving over time. Um, but back to the topic that we were talking about in terms of, um, yeah, significant others. Uh, yeah, it's similar to the startup world. Yeah, it's it's like there it's that 24/7 grind that people I mean everybody that I I had a I had a coworker and he was one of the guys or one of the founders that um he had a girlfriend but he was in the office 24/7 and he would take like every other weekend to go see her and I was like dude I don't know how you do that. I have no it, like there's no part of me that would ever want to do that. Um, unless, like, maybe I just haven't found the passion. Maybe I haven't found the thing that like drives me enough to, to seclude myself for months on end, uh, to, to push forth a project, but I don't know. And, and even with that, with the, the, the book, it's just very much that, that mindset of like, this is your life. You, you live and breathe this stuff. Even when he got home, you know, he's sitting there. Uh, thinking about like menus for the next day and what he has to order and all that shit as he first uh, first climbed. thing in the morning when he wakes up in his exactly bed, it's like there's no stop thinking about the menu yep there's nothing there's no stop there's no there's no break there's no nothing um, and I think he said he tried to be a polite civilized human being for a couple of minutes while talking to his wife in the morning before mm -hmm. he left and <laughs> had it on with his day. Yeah. But you have to be though. And that's like, like and it's weird that like, that was the, um, that was kind of the, the, the mentality of everybody within that industry, or at least the one what, during like the late, what was it? The 80s okay, and 90s. So I have a question for you. Uh, and I also have personal experience with this topic because sure. that's what Evan's life was like when we first met. Uh, sure. He was just hardcore, you know, into his work and doing whatever he could to push projects through. And it was very difficult for us to have time together if at yeah. all. But luckily we were kind of luckily we were long distance in the beginning. And so it kind of worked out sure. that way. Um, but uh, now it's much better. Um, but do you think, do you think that that's necessary? Um there's somebody right outside my window and he <laughs> dropped something out here and like it's really weird okay <laughs> i heard something this, wait, wait. yeah <laughs> um do you think do you What's think it's thing? necessary to be like that to do you like think what? that well so our whole you know we're talking about people who have garnered success in some way do hmm. you think it's necessary to be that hardcore about what you do, do it morning, at a day, afternoon, evening, in your sleep, every day, seven days a week, almost 24 hours a day, live, breathe, dream that thing. Do you think that that's a necessary ingredient to success? That's a good question. I... I've battled with that question for a while because like the, the baseline answer is yes. Like the, the overall, mm -hmm. like the surface level answer is like, if you want to get somewhere, you want to do something, you have to work for it. But yeah. at the same time, um, at least w with my experience with doing video and doing creative things, um, if I'm just doing that forever and I'm doing that like constantly, I don't have any source of inspiration uh, cause I can't like create things just out of nothing. I, I need to have experiences. I need to talk to people. I need to like, just like let my mind wander for a little bit. And if that's, if my mind doesn't move itself away from something, it won't allow it to expand. But with that also being said, that is a different industry. That is a different topic. That is a different thing. So I think it feel, it, it all depends on where you're at. If you're pushing numbers, if you're doing things that like quantity over quality, um, then absolutely the, the, the tough grind is the way to do it. Um, but at the same time, if it's quality over quantity, uh, I really, th I really think that like, it's a lot of time management. That's a little bit more important than that. But again, it's a tough one mm -hmm. because that's also something I'm, I'm fighting myself on because, you know, everybody, that's what everybody does. Everybody sits down, gets a company and just put pours their heart into it for two years and, and they're good, you know, but that's a long, long two years.
Yeah. You know who I didn't get that impression from as much was Mindy Kaling. Yeah, it seemed that's true. like it seemed like she had a pretty balanced life. Of course, she, you know, she works hard and she was very, very dedicated to her work. But at mm -hmm. the same time, she talked about other things. Like she talked about dating and she mm -hmm. had those experiences while she was working. Um, and she it just seemed like it seemed like there was a little bit more of a balance there. So you know, kind of looking back and with Matthew McConaughey, I couldn't quite tell, like, of course he worked, his work ethic is clear from, you know, from reading his work and obviously like seeing him as well, seeing mm -hmm. his work, but he also took those breaks that he needed, kind of like what you were talking about, where he would just completely tune out from everything yeah, and center himself. And I wonder if that was one of the, um, kind of conflict points in Anthony Bourdain's life. I have no idea, but we didn't see that as much from his book that taking that time to kind of return to center when things got busy or things got difficult to handle. I think it's also, uh, a, um, he was also a product of the people around him though, because if mm -hmm. everybody around you is doing all of that, like, you know, after work, you go get high, you go, to the bar you go do things and then you wake up on the on the beach in the morning and then go back to work you know that's that's the life you live then right like that because mm -hmm. if everybody else is doing it around you and that's just the way of that life and everybody's having fun um you know that's just you kind of just tag along i guess especially if you're an impressionable young kid and then you kind of grow up in that industry and you know working 12 hour days just becomes normalcy um, mm -hmm. and it just becomes like the, the thing, I, I, I don't know. It's, yeah, I don't know. It's kind it's, of it's like weird. a weird, it's kind of like a weird topic because, um, you know, where our, our show is about success, but then also we know that he committed suicide. And Correct. so we're looking at, you know, we're looking at this book and everything in it, but then also with the backstory of knowing kind of what you know happens at the end yeah. um so so yeah i mean i think like you know 12 hour days 14 hour days i think the reality as well is that those do take a toll on people and so you I can so. only work like that for so long yeah i i think a lot of that uh, well you I think another, like, if we want to talk about his, his passing, I think a lot of it also had to do with as he gained this fame, as he gained this, this like notoriety at such a later age, he, um, he was able to look at it, uh, look at life through a different lens and be able to take this opportunity to go and see the world, to go and explore yeah. different places. And I remember there was an episode, there was a few episodes that, um, I watched his documentary, which I would recommend. It's called Roadrunner. Um, it's a very good documentary of him and it kind of, paints the picture of like how everything kind of came to be um and there was uh, later in his life like when he was going to a bunch of these like uh third world countries or like uh, places that were just like underprivileged and watching the 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 horrible things that people were doing to survive and just like just but just being there to, to witness this and like knowing that there's nothing he can do about it is just like and I think that's what really took a toll on him is like seeing the realities of life. And, and, you know, after being so kind of secluded in the New York city life, um, and then finally ex expanding from there and just having full blown uh, interactions with other cultures and other, uh, other people, um, and realizing the, the, the true, uh, like, cause he, he had lows in his life, obviously, you know, he, uh, he was uh, hardcore addicted to heroin and everything like that. Uh, well, not everything like that, but like heroin. Um, and so he knows what suffering, like to some extent feels like I would feel he, he has some issues there. So being able to see that throughout the world just probably was not a, was not a, uh, I don't know. It probably didn't do too yeah. well for, for him, but I don't well, know. He's, that, he's like the kind of person who's sort of all in, like all yeah. in or nothing. Yeah into his work, into what he's pursuing. I wonder why though. 
Yeah. So that kind of, uh, actually, that's a good segue into something else that I noticed from the beginning, which is his motivation for yeah. um, getting into food and for, for other things, which I found interesting. Um, I think if we look at, it seems like everybody we've seen so far, they kind of knew early on what they liked. Of course, Matthew McConaughey was studying law and then mm -hmm. decided he wants to tell stories, right? Yeah. Mindy Kaling knew from an early age she the wanted to write yeah. comedy and do that. Yeah. Um, and and Anthony Bourdain also talks about his introduction to food when he's with his parents in France on that summer trip. Mm -hmm. um, and and then he also talks about his experience in Mario's kitchen uh, at the first time that he you know had the experience being in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. and working in that environment. And so what I what I noticed was that both of those times, like with his parents, for instance, um, I think so he and his brother, and he's what, like 12 or 10 or something. He's like he's a, something, yeah. a kid, right? Maybe yep. nine. I, I don't remember how old. Yeah. And his brother's uh, younger than him. And um, they're with their parents at his, I think his dad is French. So they're in France and uh, I think it seems like they go every summer. Um, and they're like, he and his brother are causing a ruckus for the most part, because they don't like any of the food. They just want their like American stuff, right? Their American mm -hmm. food, French mm -hmm. fries and yeah, hamburgers, all this other, chicken yeah, hamburgers, chicken fingers, that kind of stuff. And he, he recalls that one time where he calls, he recalls the time where he tried an oyster. Mm -hmm. um, and he recalls a time where his parents went to a fancy restaurant and actually left he and his brother, him and his brother in the car. Mm -hmm. And he was like personally offended by that. Yeah. And he decided he was going to show up his parents um, mm -hmm. and be really, and, and try all the foods he could out to sort spite. of like show them up out of spite. And I think after that, he's in this opportunity where they go with the, you know, the local fishermen, the oystermen um, looking for oysters. And the guy asks like, who wants to try an oyster? And he raises his hand or whatever. He's like, oh, I'll do it. And then he does that and he gives him that, like that feeling like he's a very, you know, sense, sense, scent oriented person. So I think mm -hmm. it brought to him that those, those feelings that he, that sort of like, seems like they grab him throughout his life. Um, but it was interesting to, to see that motivation unravel. Like I am going to try all the foods I can because my parents, went to the restaurant without me without and of course yeah. they did that because he and his brother were caused wreaking havoc ends. everywhere yeah. else they went um and then again when he's working at mario's kitchen a little bit later as like a teenager or something mm -hmm. I, I think um he gets uh he gets ridiculed by the guy who he's uh, i think apprenticing for or something like that yeah. Um, cause so. he's like a, yeah, he's like, he thinks, he know he thinks he's hot shit. Right. But he's actually not very helpful in the kitchen. This is very early. It's like his first job. And yeah. then he gets yelled at and then he's like, I'm going to go, I'm going to come back and be better than these guys. Mm -hmm. And that's his, and then he does, he goes and he yeah. enrolls in the film and uh, not the film, sorry. He enrolls in the culinary Institute in New York. And then he comes back and he works for them. He gets a job. And he's back, like, sh you know, kind of showing them up. So you, you, you mentioned, like, why, you know, why was he so into what he did? Mm -hmm. um, you know, you wonder why that was. I wonder if this has to do with that, his, like, motivations, his, like, almost feels like this urge or this desire to, to not be the person people are making fun of or to be better, come across better, like, sh you know, do things that, kind of like prove himself in yeah. some ways yeah i wonder how because I, I i felt that as well i i understand i kind of feel that personal thing of like wanting to to prove people wrong you know you want to mm. you want to you want to one-up the people that tell you you can't do this or you can't do that or like you know you want to outshine people but i think at a point he got to he, he hit a breaking point or he hit a he hit like a limit uh and then it started to get kind of just 
grimy. I don't know if there's a better way. To, like, a, mm. it just got difficult for him. I don't know. It, it, he didn't. He rose up. He went to the CIA. Um, and he he got his degree. He got a bunch of jobs within New York City. But then he kind of just bounced around in the same uh, kind of field of work for a long time and didn't really move himself up too much. It was all a lot of like back and forth. Um, uh, some people liked him. He got destroyed. Like you know, he he ruined this business. He he went to this business for a little while. But he says and- he was on the verge of just quitting being a chef forever and just yeah. he lost all hope in life and that's when bigfoot took him in yeah uh, yeah right yeah yeah and gave him just, kind of like structure and order and helped set him straight which might be and, and that's kind of something that maybe i i, I really like to take i should probably take from this um personally is like i i like i said i have that i had that mindset when i was going to college and everything i always wanted to one-up everybody i always wanted to to show people like to make even through like the high school throughout it was just like i i wanted to make sure that i was either the best or up with the best of the crew um and after that i kind of just coasted um and i think a lot of that has to do with my inability to organize myself uh Mm -hmm. and and really structure my life in a way that i can use my time wisely uh so maybe bigfoot was his way of like was it was anthony's um like physical way of, of getting that discipline uh, so that he can kind of uh, dig his heels in and, and, and go for it. And I just need to find my Bigfoot, I guess, you know, uh, we all need to find our own Bigfoot for the, uh, um, for the organization and for the structure of our lives. Yeah. Yeah. No, I completely agree with that too. I think for me, I have a very natural competitive drive mm-hmm. and I don't, also don't like to be the person who's like losing or doing badly at something. I like to be on top. Um, but I also am trying, you know, over the last five years, I've tried to temper that down in a way so that it doesn't make me feel, I remember like the first time I took a surfing lesson, I had never surfed before. And I learned, learned to swim very late in life. I'm still kind of learning, um, you know, ocean swimming. Right. Mm. And I was, I was able, I went, it was my first surfing lesson. I was able to stand up on the board, which some people can't do even, but I was Mm. so upset that that was all like, I wanted to do better. Like I wanted to, you know, ride a wave really well. And I was just like completely upset for hours that I didn't do better in my first surfing lesson. And everyone's like, what are you doing? You stood up on the board. Like, this is ridiculous. Like, why yeah. would you be good the first time you go out? And then, I but be. I was, I know, I was so upset. So I'm try. I've tried to like, you know, I've learned to also temper that and be more realistic about approaching things. But at the same time, I think it's almost like an art, like harnessing your com- competitive drive um, when it makes sense, but then letting go of it and not being attached to it when it hurts you. Um, But at the same time, I also agree with you on on the structure, which is, I think for me, that's also very helpful. I I do think I naturally thrive in environments where maybe there isn't too much structure, but at the same Mm -hmm. time, having like that, it's almost like Bigfoot was almost like a coach, right? Like giving him tough love and like giving him that structure. I think that that can be very helpful to a helpful motivating factor, kind of like pointing people in the right direction and giving those tools and those systems. He seemed like a very systematic thinker, like he has a system set up and holding him accountable, holding him accountable. Um, So, yeah, I think that's also very helpful for me. But how can we what are some ideas like how can we bring more of that into our lives or how does somebody find you said find your big foot? How do you? How do you do that? Like, what are your, what are your thoughts thinking about it for yourself? That's really hard. Um, because like a lot of, at least for myself, and I, I believe a lot of people that work from home or do anything like that, a lot of it has to do with like, you have to be your own boss and you might even have to be your own Bigfoot. Um, and that's hard. Uh, you know, there's a lot of times where you can have coworkers or friends that can hold you accountable, but they can only ever do so much. Uh, and you know, it's, it's more of, I I think the, the struggling thing, at least for myself is the ability to let myself down and be okay with that. Um, and I'm, I'm, if I, if I have to, if I let somebody else down, 
then I really feel bad. And I don't, I can't do that. But Mm. if I'm letting myself down, I said that let somebody else down. I said that, right? Okay. If I let myself down, I kind of, I kind of just like, I don't care. Like I'm like, ah, whatever, Mm. you know? And I, I think it might, it, that's why it's 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 hard, especially when it comes to like being somebody that works for yourself or has the, um, uh, you, you know, self-employed. You know, you you have you to know be your own what? motivator. I think a lot more people ha- are like what you just said than we think, because what do you mean? I see people around me who, um, um, like some of my closest friends, and even Evan, for instance, like they have incredible drive an incredible commitment, an incredible follow through. But then when you dig deeper, you learn that they also feel like they don't. And they've sort of like created an environment where there's other people around them, where they feel like they don't want to let those other people down. And that's what drives them. Oh, okay. I like that. I have another friend. He's very like, he's incredibly driven um you know he is in the startup world he's also a creator he's written his own comic um he um he does jujitsu and he's someone like you you look at him and be like wow he's so driven um but he also like when you dig a little bit deeper when you talk to him you see that he's kind of like carefully setting up these situations in his life so that he's not accountable to only himself because he has a higher chance like he doesn't want to let other people down and that's the driving factor so i think probably more people than we think are like that but maybe the difference is that they kind of set up their environment where they get that external accountability even for personal work that's a good idea i mean I still have the issue with procrastination though. Like I'll still get it done, but I still wait till the last minute, which is also like a thing. I feel but like a lot of people do too. Right. So that's the yeah. thing that's also that I'm learning. I'm like, well, you know, and nobody's perfect. Um, and again, like take Mindy Kaling, for example, and that play that they did um, with Ben Affleck or like where they were Ben Affleck and Matt Damon. Yeah. They were, they seemed like there were countless times where they were just like, hanging out and they'd end up doing something else together. Right. Yeah. But the mm-hmm. thing is they kept going and they got the end product finished and delivered outside. So, you know, like at one time on one side, I think like, yes, you could always push and strive to be better, have better work ethic, like keep doing better. But on the other hand, you don't have to be perfect to be successful. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. I think, I think a big thing that I struggle with though, then too, is like, uh, I maybe I'm doing more than I think I am, and it's that mentality of like. And I I talk about this with my therapist. Is like sometimes I feel like maybe I am giving like I'm not giving myself enough credit, and maybe that's what a lot of us may be doing is just not giving ourselves enough credit for what we are doing, um, because of some high expectation that we set yeah. for ourselves or that people set around us, um, that makes it makes us feel like because I don't know. I, I know what it's like to do the the like the hardcore um twenty four seven workload for like a little while. I did it for a couple months straight. Um, you know, uh, but if I'm not doing that, am I not being productive? If I'm not doing that, am I not, you know, gonna accomplish anything? And that's kind of the mindset mm-hmm. that that's been plaguing me for a little while of like, you know, do I give myself the benefit of the doubt and be like, Hey man, you are doing a lot. Or should I still keep kicking myself in the ass and telling myself that like, no, that is the way to do it. That is the way you're going to ever get anywhere. You got to get back to that mentality at some point. It doesn't have to be now, but there has to be a point in your life where you are driving that 24 seven, the 24 seven push. It's very, it's very weird back and forth. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if it then becomes, it's more about like the end passion for the end product that we're going for that lets us reach that level of drive um there may be some things that we feel like we have to work really hard in order to make that thing happen and there may be other things where we are working really hard but 
we're kind of in flow. And so we don't realize it. And we just naturally want to do that thing. Mm -hmm. Um, So I wonder if life is also like, and the art of living is also more of like finding those areas where we're naturally driven to want to produce more. And it doesn't feel like the drive is coming from within rather than being forced. Like I can see that in different things I do, right? There's some things I do where I'm like, it feels like my nails are dragging against a chalkboard. And like, no matter how hard I work, I can't like, it takes hours to do the simplest tasks. And there are other, there's other areas where I do like these amazing feats of, you know, of, of work or creation that I feel like a lot of people can't do in a short amount of time, but I'm so, I'm so excited about it that I like get it done. And I want yeah. with every ounce of my body to do it, you know? Yeah. So I wonder if that's a factor, like finding the things where you just know, like you want to put, you want to put your sweat, blood and tears in it. You know, it's not even a, it's not even a decision. You're like, mm-hmm. I got to do this. I want to do this. Is it okay that I don't, I don't have do you, that feeling right now? What do you think right about now, that? Yeah, I think so. Um, have you had fear. that feeling? Have you had that feeling? Yeah. Yeah, I've had that feeling. Like I used to do like daily vlogs in mm-hmm. college where I would make a 20 minute video every day for a semester um, or like every other day. It was a lot. And like I, I wanted to do it. Nobody paid me to do it. Nobody told me to do it. I just did it myself. And I thought it was fun and it was a cool little like I had a purpose to it. There was a reason mm, for it. Purpose is a good word. Yeah, yeah. But like I don't know. It was like it was like a blissful purpose though. It was a it was uh it was um ignorant ignorant purpose, you know? I, ignorance is bliss purpose. Like, did it really mm. matter what I was doing? No, but it mattered to me at that time. And that's mm. where it's like the purpose came. And I think that I don't know. Maybe there's a lot of people that are struggling. And I, I, I struggle with this is like the, the personal purpose, the purpose of like, you know, I like these things. I like things that I'm doing. I'm liking the things that like are coming my way and the opportunities and the people I'm meeting. Mm-hmm. But it's not it's not fulfilling to the point that I had before. You know, there's mm-hmm. not a lot of fulfillment. I just if anything, I sit down to do something that I like to do and I just go, oh, I have to do this. You know, it's, it's very, it's very weird. I don't know. I don't know. We're kind of going on a tangent here of that. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, I think it's related to the whole thing because, and I think for, you know, Anthony food was his purpose for a very, Mm -hmm. very long time. Um, And it, it kind of drove him. Can we say that that was his ultimate purpose or you know, it's sort of interesting because of the original motivators maybe behind yeah. him getting into food, but no doubt he loved, he loved food. He yeah. enjoyed trying different things. He enjoyed like creating it. He, creating it. He enjoyed putting together that, that environment. And he kind yeah. of like, in a way, in a way, in a way thrived in that environment. Like he felt like it was his home. Right. Yeah. Um, put him in a corporate job behind a desk eight hours a day, is it going to be the same output? No. No. I wouldn't think so. No. Yeah. Yeah. Right? No, you're right. You're you're completely correct. It's... uh... It's not like he was tracking marketing metrics for a startup. (laughs) True. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, so... (laughs) So what are you trying um, to say there, Priya? Well, I wonder if it's like then about like the larger, the the purpose, but the larger, the larger mission of what you're trying to do. Like, do you resonate with that? So, okay. So I'm going to bring up something else that I have down. I have a list of notes as usual. Um, right. One thing, of course, that we've seen, I think with all of these folks so far is that they are hustlers, right? Yeah. And they like, have a way of just making stuff happen. And so he mentions when he, his first sort of like catering business, Moonlight Menus, Mm -hmm. um, that he did with Dimitri. Mm -hmm. And this is back when he was working at at Mario's. 
Um, and he, so, okay. So they did this, they were tasked with putting on this catering event for Mario and, um, they got really into it because, um, they were both very interested in like sort of the, the finer art of cooking. Whereas, you know, I think Mario's kitchen was like a high, maybe like a high end Italian place, maybe not even high end, but just like a, a nice Italian kitchen. Mm -hmm. Um, and so they put all their effort into catering this, this party, and then it went really well. And so they started giving out their business cards to people who came, being like, oh, we can do this for you, and we can do this for you, um, and you know, charging a pretty good rate for it. And of course, they got some takers. And what I found interesting was that they basically, so basically, they, they sold. They sold what they were doing without having it and then followed through. And mm. they did this a couple of times. Like they talk about successes and failures they had. They had both. They had times when it didn't pan out. They had times when it did pan out. They committed to doing these, like presenting these um, like structural, I think dishes that were almost impossible to make. And they followed through with them and they created some of them and others not. Um, but I think that's sort of like the beauty of the hustle but also going back to our conversation that we were just having, I feel like they were really, really into what they were doing. Like they enjoyed every ethic, wanted to be there, passing out in the refrigerator, mm -hmm. looking at all these like, you know, the, the ingredients that they were putting into their work. Like it was their, their craft. And he talks about this idea of craft versus art, which he doesn't go into too detail, but I think he brings up that theme a couple of times that I found very interesting. Like in a, when you're working in a restaurant, it's a craft. And I can see that because your job is to produce the same menu item over and over and over and over again with consistency really quickly mm -hmm. and manage all the systems, all the orders, among all the chaos, all the havoc, do that in an even killed manner and produce the output every time. Whereas an artist is more somebody who I feel like creates something like that might be the, that might be what the chef is doing in his dreams, creating a new menu item. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but then the cook's job is to, 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 to put it to out replicate. consistently to yeah. replicate. Um, but anyway, I think like one of the things that I saw from him was that of course, that incredible hustle, that dedication to his craft, to the goals he put forth. But it seemed like he was really into everything that he was doing. That, and he also was like surrounded by others that were also pretty uh, heavily involved in the industry as well. So again, it's that brotherhood mentality, like that that group movement. You and know? also surrounding yourself with like minded people. I think we saw that in um, in Mindy Kaling's book, where mm -hmm. she, as she grew older, she decided to have more friends who shared her interest in comedy. Mm -hmm. And then that's who she ended up creating that Ben and her roommate that yeah. Ben and Matt play with. Yeah. They yeah, were yeah, both yeah. really into it. Like they both used their extra time. I think they said they had one or two hours max per day between the other random jobs that they were doing. And they used that time to work or not work on that thing. Yeah. And I think it's a lot of like, cause like that, that also, I, I'm sorry if you can hear all those bottles being thrown in the background. Do you hear that? <laughs> a, a little bit now that you mentioned it. Dude, the, 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 the restaurant downstairs apparently has like thousands of bottles and they just stand here for 10 minutes on end, just like tossing Let's them. Let's invite like, them up and see if they listen to, uh, to Red Anthony Bourdain. Yeah, definitely. I don't think they speak much English, but we can try. Well, neither do neither do his uh, employees at his restaurants, right? It's true. That's very true. That's very very true. Um, but no, I I think that's something that like maybe that's maybe that's the reason that um. Sorry, I keep kind of bringing it back to my own personal stuff. No, but, this is uh, that's what that's what our show is for. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um. It's like I'm I'm surrounded by people that are dedicated or that are like like the thing that they're doing, but it's nobody that really inspires me. Like, and no offense to any of my friends or anything like that. Like, uh, I know a lot of people are working, but like, I don't. 
it's it's very hard it's very weird it's a weird like uh weird circumstance like anybody that's doing the video thing right now is just like around me is just like they're doing it but it's not it's not like they're they're one up like i, I don't know i, I and I think that's that's kind of what's because I have to be that person then, and I don't know if I'm ready to be that person again. And that's that's the problem is like I was that person for a little while, and I know I was that person for a little while. Um, but I I'm I I I know if I I don't know if I can I don't know if I want to do that again. I don't know if and I have the that? energy. Why? Because I don't know if I have yeah. the energy. I don't know. I, it's, it's it's so much. And that that was something. Who did I who did I talk to about this? Um. Oh, I was talking to some of my friends the other night during our we had a we had a dinner party. Um and they were asking me why I don't want to do like why I'm so afraid to do the the YouTube thing again, like to to go in cuz that's what I I I would love to do that. That that's like everything that I would dream of, like sit down and talk to a camera for a living, you know? That's mm -hmm. that's amazing. Um but being that I've done I I spent like a year and a half just like pushing so hard for this one company uh for it to for me to get canned at the end of it um, yeah. because they didn't get any funding and like, it just like, it didn't yeah. take off the way that they wanted. It's just, I'm afraid of that again. I'm afraid of like putting in all that effort, all that effort to do something and it just to kind of fizzle out and not turning it. And it, it's just like being a waste of time, you know? Um, and, and that's well, kind of where it's want, like, do you want to do the videos for another company or do you just like for myself? Yeah. I would rather I like my 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 main uh my main selling point is at least it has been is my ability like my personality on camera like mm -hmm. that was my original selling point and that's what I'm really good at I'm very good at like like moving and maneuvering content around my ability to act and then edit around my acting because I'm not mm -hmm. a great actor but I can edit enough and I know how to edit in like a in a YouTube sense uh, mm -hmm. that makes it entertaining that keeps you engaged um so like normal companies don't really like that they don't want that um but i i i, I find that rather uh, entertaining so um that's kind of the side that i'd like to so do so then the, tr the, tr the trick is finding a way to monet trying different ways to monetize that or even just get i i, I want to just get consistent with it first monetizing yeah. is a later goal um mm -hmm. finding an audience is number one um uh, well there's number two number one is just recording editing and posting on a consistent mm -hmm. level or a consistent basis uh so it's just but again it's 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 that it's that that's that thing of like i don't know if i'm ready to be that that motivator you know mm -hmm. so maybe you know because i know that 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 startup world is still kind of fresh yeah. Um, so maybe it just needs, you know, a little break and then I think I'm thinking that's what it is too. It hasn't even yeah. been a year yet. Like in, uh, like, I mean, a year's a long time, but at the same time, um, I'm still like weeding my way out of it as it goes. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Very much so. I, uh, it's like kind of, it goes, I have another comment that kind of goes with that. I think a little bit mm -hmm. too. Um, and it's, it's finding people like we're talking about people that like inspire you, keeping people around yeah. you that motivate you. And, and, and I also uh, want to say with that, doing things, um, one thing I saw in common between him and uh, our friend, Matthew, um, this thing called outlaw spirit, he uses that phrase ooh. in the beginning of the book. And I was like, oh, that makes me like think that. of Matthew McConaughey, outlaw spirit, doing things differently, like putting out this book. So I think there's a couple of different ty types of people in this fight. You know, this will segue into also what you were going to say, like people who inspire us. But there's people who do what people do, like what society trains us to do, tells us to do, tells us is acceptable. And then there's people who just think differently. They do what they're pulled to do. Again, like we mentioned in the beginning of the episode, regardless of whether it ruffles feathers of how people feel about it. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like this outlaw spirit. Um, but I think those there aren't a lot of outlaws um, 
just in everyday life, I feel like that I, who I come across, and maybe that's a part of the thing is like surrounding yourself with more outlaws or more people who are just like thinking, acting, doing differently. Um, but what were you going to say? Oh, no, I like, we'll, we'll roll with that for a little bit. I like that. Mm. I mean, it's the whole mindset of, of like, um, going against the status quo. And if you want to like pe- anybody who's made a difference in the world broke the rules to some extent, move, move, looked outside the box, thought outside the box, you know, uh, do you ever think that you're trying to fit inside the box? No, I, I think that about myself. Really? I, think that's I feel my, like I'm, I think I'm that's trying to struggle. Yeah. I feel like I'm trying too hard not to mm. fit inside the box. And I think that's the issue is like, I'm afraid I am in the box and I'm not, mm. I'm not as creatively free or I'm not as inspiring or I'm not as, um, you know, special, we'll, we'll say as, as, uh, creatively free. That's a very, very interesting, um, phrase to me. What is, what does that mean to you? At firstly, would you say Anthony Bourdain was creatively free? I think so. I think he was very like, I mean, based on what I, um, based on like uh, creatively free in the way that like he wrote, he wrote many books during his time mm-hmm. while being a chef. So like he still took his time for his own personal endeavors and his po- own personal mm-hmm. creative freedoms. Um, and like, I don't know, he, he kind of just did it. He didn't really, he didn't seem to really care much for what other people were, were going to say about it or do it. Like, cause his first couple books, like didn't really do too hot. Um, and he still kept writing, you know, and how many books did he write before this one? One or two, I think, okay. I think one, one was like a, I think they were fiction books. So yeah. they were like stories. Cause like at the end of the, at the end of kitchen confidential, he talks about how he goes to Tokyo for a little bit and, um, his publisher for his previous book, um, uh, they have a Japanese branch or something and uh-huh. they put his book out in the front lobby and did the whole thing and like a meet and greet and whatnot. So mm-hmm. he at least had one, I'm not sure of any before that or prior to that, but even I still, I also have a, I also have a quote with us for us for that. Um, and it, me coming in with the quotes, it's been a while. We didn't do that at all today. Um, yeah. Ah, okay, never mind. It's it's really simple. It says we had some successes and some failures. So I just bring that up because what you're saying is like, and I think that's a part of our, you know, our show is that again, like these people reach successes, but obviously they also had failures. And the books that he's written, had written even before this, whether it was one or two, was a perfect example of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. he had those previous, like not everything was a a full-on success at the beginning. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, yeah. I think going with the, the, like, it kind of, that, but it's that mentality of just like still keep pushing, still keep doing. And I that probably stems from his his nonstop work attitude. Um, it's just like when he ha- puts his mind into something, he just goes for it. And it doesn't like a homie. He he quit heroin. Like that's a that's a tough thing to do to, to break any drug uh, abuse, like uh, drug addiction is a very tough thing to do, meaning that he he is a very mentally strong individual. Um and like that kind of also yeah. is is very much like uh, you know it, well I, there were, did you get to the part where he he kind of mentioned why he made that decision no he was uh, hanging out with a group of his friends and it said like uh what was it like uh one out of five people will quit uh like their drug addiction or something like that and there was, he was a group of five, and he's like, I'm not, I'm going to be the one. I'm not going to be the other four. It's that and same so, drive. <laughs> same yep. Yeah, it, it is. Oh my God, it is. Okay, it's to beat everybody else. Okay, I, fuck. It's competitive. It's so competitive. Okay. Whether he says it or he doesn't out loud, it, like even just thinking it of being like, I'm not going to be you guys. I'm going to be better than you. I'm going to one up everybody around me. That's fuck, dude. <laughs> 
Oh. Wow. Oh, my God. I, my Slack keeps just blowing up over here. God damn. It's throwing me off. But anyways, wow. Okay. I like... That's a... That's a... Hmm. Interesting, huh? Yeah, it is. That's very... That's just like... That's that's the way he is then, right? That's yeah. just like... That's how he... That's how he got to where he was. It's just the one up the next. I wonder how he did that with his book then. I wonder if that was just like a coincidence that his book did well, or if he was like, I'm going to keep writing because so-and-so wrote a book and I want to be better than them. That's a good question. Uh, we will probably never know. Uh, so, well, we can ask him in the afterlife. Mm -hmm. That'll be my first question to God. When I meet God, he'll be like, what are your four requests prior to entering hell? <laughs> I'll be like, uh, God, I don't know why you're giving me any requests for going to hell, but thank you. Uh, number one. You Anthony can ask Bourdain. before you go to sleep tonight, and maybe you'll have the answer in the morning. Oh, is that how that works? Are you telling me I'm going to die tonight, say. Priya? No, I'm saying you throw, <laughs> throw out a question to the universe, and then you'll get some answer in your sleep or in some way, shape, and form. Does that happen? Have you ever had that happen to you before? Um... N no, not in that way, but I've had, I've had, um, things pop up in meditation, like, mm -hmm. or, or dreams, words, or other things that then explain themselves over the next day or two. Interesting. Now yeah. you think that's like more manifestation of that, that in like allowing your brain to kind of come up with ideas pertaining and like, let your brain go for it or. Mm, not in these, not in these particular two oh, or three okay. scenarios. No, gotcha. it more seemed like a puzzle that oh. I need to figure out what the puzzle means. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so, you know, he, he wrote, he wrote the books um, and he kept writing books and we may never know the real motivation <laughs> behind <Yeah>. doing them. <laughs> but it seems like the key takeaway is just to, like, find yourself, like give yourself milestones or give yourself goals to beat. I think that's the number one thing that I, I think that's something that we had as kids growing up. Yeah. You had things to, to achieve. Like you had stepping stones, you had things like yeah. to, to like that other people were setting for you. And now we have to set them for ourselves. And, yes. and know, that's where Bigfoot set the goals for him. And he felt like he had to do it. Yeah. Cause this yeah, guy yeah, yeah. was trusting. Remember he said like, he wasn't even Bigfoot gave him some money cause he was doing drugs at the time. And he's mm -hmm. like, um yeah he's like, he's like I, I need if i was you i wouldn't have given me money yeah and then he felt like he had to come back just because bigfoot trusted him and gave him more money than what he asked yeah yeah so yeah. it's still kind of like linked to it it's linked to other people right yeah. both yep. the drive the like the drive to do something or the drive to be accountable Mm -hmm. Like I need to, this person trusted me. I have to live up to their expectation. I have to be, you know, I'm not going to be the one out of these people to not do this or, or to do this. Um, hmm. But also I think what you were, what you were also getting at, it seems like is when he sets his mind, when he set his mind to something, he followed through. Yeah. Yeah. That's a whole thing. He doesn't, uh, and maybe it's a lack of like, he doesn't want to disappoint himself. And maybe that's a thing um, or maybe he's been humiliated too many times within the mm -hmm. industry that like any sort of like self, like, uh, are you, you know, afraid not... of humiliation? Am I afraid of humiliation? Um, I mean like, I don't like being humiliated, but at the same time, again, it's one of those things of like, I'm, I'm pretty apathetic when it comes to like not fulfilling my own goals. I, I'm, the excuse queen, man. I'm I, hmm. I I can make excuses like nothing, and that's not a good thing. And I know it's not a good thing, uh, and it's something that I've I've. Uh, it's weird because when I was in high school, that was my number one thing. Is like I don't like excuses. I hate people that make excuses. And then look at me now, making relative excuses for things, and I don't like it. I don't like it at all. We could uh, take a page. We should end with this exercise. Take a page, and write no excuses with a sharpie and put it up on your wall i'll do that too i'm gonna go get right okay. back all right go for it no excuses
Which, you know, brings me to the last thing that I'd like to cover here. Yeah. And it's the concept of character, which he brings up also. Yes. A number yeah, I wrote of that times. down too. I wrote that down too. Oh, I really like that. Hey. Nice. I wrote that down. What is it? Like uh, talking, uh, taking into consideration character over skill. Skill can be taught, yes. character can't. Yeah, Ex- I like exactly. that. Exactly. And this, yeah. I think, has to do with character. Mm-hmm. Characters yeah. like showing up on time, showing up, um, following through, integrity, probably not giving excuses and not lying and not making Loyal. stuff up. A big thing in the industry is loyalty. Loyalty. A lot of loyalty and a lot of disloyalty, but, but a lot right. of loyalty. Um. How do you how do you feel about like that? What are your thoughts on the character kind of thing and the, the importance it plays in your own life? Like, I mean, that's a yeah. Uh, in my own life, uh, mm-hmm. I don't know. That's kind of how I always get all my jobs. Is my 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 character and my ability to talk to people and my relationships that I build with people. It doesn't really necessarily. Mm-hmm. I, I can do my job. Like I, I'm I'm a decent video editor and and whatever. Um, but a lot of it has to do with my character rather than my skill. It's my ability to make those personal connections. Those, and I, I think that's very important in, in most of life. I think that's being able to be personable, being able to connect with people, being able to be empathetic for other people and, mm-hmm. and have those genuine interactions with other people is what's really going to get you to, to, to move around in this world and have other people have your back. And I think that's the yeah. number one thing. Being yeah. yourself. I do feel like, I feel like, the way things have evolved in um, in our culture and society, I don't know, maybe, I don't know if this is right or wrong, but I feel like a lot of the world doesn't really care about character anymore. Um, even in the workforce, like I feel like the importance is on, you know, skill and experience versus character. Um, I don't like that approach. You know, I, I no. also... I, that's why I, I highlighted that when I saw it in here. Like, I really agree with that. Uh, I really, I've been in situations in the past, like over a decade ago, where I hired people onto my team because of the character and it worked out really well. Like I was able to teach them everything they needed to know. And they were so loyal, so dedicated, so great to work with. Mm-hmm. Um and I've been in these other situations where it's been the opposite, where it's like the character is completely, you know, almost like unimportant. And it's all about like the type of exact type of skill or exact combination of experience that, mm-hmm. you know, somebody is looking for and the character is kind of out of the question. There's no camaraderie. Yeah. 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 Now, why do you think that is, though? Why do you think it's shifted to that that skill set rather than character set? I, I don't know if it's shifted or if that's also more of like a, a corporate versus creative environment thing. Sure. Maybe, yeah, maybe true. not. I mean, there's a lot of creatives with no character. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why I said maybe, maybe not. I was like, yeah, yeah, ah, yeah. Ah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I think the number one thing that you said, though, is like also loyalty. I think that's something that's like was very heavily put, pushed in this book as well with a lot of these people is like they're people are very loyal to each other and like uh, they have each other's backs in a lot of ways. And if you don't fit in that crew and you don't show any of that loyalty, show any of that like togetherness, uh, you, you you find yourself very quickly ousted. Um, and it's it's that it's it is a, it's a it is a shitty environment that a lot of people are like working in it's not like the easiest it's not the easiest environment yeah. so having people that do have your back and that can work well together and have that loyalty have that character that you know works well with one another uh it's it i th- feel like that's what kind of keeps the flame going because it's like and that then we're rewarding all in the loyalty too he talks of about course. bigfoot and how bigfoot will like work people you know <laughs> wait. But, yeah. but then but then just when the person needed some sort of pick me up or boost they were going to leave break. He would yeah. reward them with something. 
Yep. Yeah. Yeah, which is a little manipulative. I but, know. Uh, very, very manipulative. But very, <laughs> very manipulative. <laughs> again, this industry is not an easy one. We'll put it that way. Or it wasn't, at least. Yeah. I wonder if it's still the same way. I wonder if it's still like that. I don't know. We'll have to bring in a guest and see. Maybe. Yeah. You know, M- Miriam, Miriam's, um, Miriam's husband, um, I think, worked part time for a bit. I think he's a bartender. In the I thought he yeah. was a bartender. Oh, he's a bartender. Okay. I think so. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Well, we'll more familiar him. with the industry than we are. Yeah, than we are. Absolutely. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah. Maybe we'll ask. Maybe we'll have him on. We'll, we'll be like, yeah. "Hey, buddy, what's it like to yeah. be in the in the kitchen?" Hey. <laughs> i don't even know what accent that was but it was something me neither <laughs> but um but. to our folks who are part of the yaysayers a book club and podcast uh we have your back right we should have each other yeah. back. yeah 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 we yeah. got your back i don't even know who you are but we got your back <laughs> see you username one seven six seven three like it's how a really you pull bad that out of your ass. Yeah, I pulled that one really quick. <laughs> Do you like that? I was very creative with that one. Uh, it was I had really a number. Creative. I made a number. Oh <laughs> you made it's that creative you freedom. Made a number. It's that cre- I made that number. number, number that is my exist. number. That number did not exist prior. This is my number. Mine. Oh my gosh. So well, what do we say about a yeah kitchen yeah. confidential? Are we going to recommend, would you recommend this book to other people? I know you, how, how far did you get into it so far? Um, You know, I got in, I read a good chunk of the way through and then bounced around a little bit to acquaint myself with it. Sure. Um, I would recommend it um, because I think it's interesting to do this deep dive into another industry and to see how it works, but then also mm-hmm. like from his point of view, um, understand kind of what he was like, his motivations, his, the reason that he did things, learning about his character, his follow through. Um, you know, I think, I think you can really take that from reading this. It's really evident. You learn a lot about him. Yeah. Yeah, What about you? I would, read I've, book I've read the book. I've listened to the book too many times. And uh, so absolutely would recommend it's it, it is that it's more of for me, it's more of a nice feeling to watch and have that authentic storytelling perspective from a real human being's life prior mm-hmm. to them being successful and this being mm-hmm. the literal reason for him being successful. Um, so it's just like, it's, 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 it's literally just like a, a golden piece of content that is like, this you know thing. what? It's it's raw. It's yeah. raw kind. It's raw. Like you it use is. that word. That's really that's true. It's raw. It is. It is. And that's what I really like about it. There's no fluff pieces. It's very legitimate. Like he doesn't hold back in a lot of ways. And like even if like you the had dirty to put parts. Something really raw out there. Like you un unabashed, no bars hold. Didn't give a no fuck. S- nothing to worry about. What would you put out? What would I put out? Yes, you. Oh, I do the story of my life. That would be an interesting one. I had a rough childhood. So, I uh I've I've thought about that actually. I've thought about writing a writing a memoir about that or doing like uh doing something about that. Um so that's what I would do because there's a lot of people that have probably gone through similar things. I have definitely gone through similar things and just really opening up about that and and not really taking uh, maybe not taking my family's feelings into consideration is a bad thing to say, but at the same time, just being raw about it, being authentic about it would be uh, the most, the best way for people to uh, empathize and relate, I guess. And that's what I, I again, what I like about this one. needs and rewards authenticity. I think so too. And that's again, why I, it's it, like literally this book is a very nice representation of that. It's like mm-hmm. this, he literally poured his life into a book of like the, his life for the last 20 years into a book and was like, this is the good and bad parts of everything in this industry. Uh, like it or not, this is how it happened. And this is my story. And then the world was like, that's cool. You know? And like, so because it's because it's literally, you're, you're, you're everybody's, everybody's got a story. And if you know how to tell it right, then uh, you, can, you can allow people to empathize and relate to you. 
That's what mm. everybody wants, just to be relatable. Mm. And sometimes, and sometimes people don't, and there's successes and there's failures. That's, that's how it is. It is. Right? That is how it yeah. is. It is what it is. So would we, uh, <clears throat> would we give this the stamp of approval? Are we, uh, are we giving, the, let's go yeah, through let's... the criteria. We okay. have a little five, five step breakdown, right? Or yes, four? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Five. Uh, so number one, a depiction of overcoming a struggle. I'm trying to think of a specific time where he overcame well i mean essentially doing the, the i would say maybe the kind of his it, like from the beginning when he got him, like humiliated at uh Mar was it mario's mm -hmm, with uh mm -hmm, with homeboy mm -hmm. uh, tyrone i think that was the guy's mm -hmm. name um mm -hmm. uh and then like kind of taking that taking that l taking that loss of like being the like being literally thrown aside being like, nah, I'm going to go and uh, one-up everybody here mm -hmm. and going and doing that, so <laughs> overcoming that struggle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I was going to say that, like, he doesn't really talk about the drug maybe in the weeds about this, this struggle, but also maybe he wasn't really like that. Like, he's a very action-oriented person. So I literally think like the it. actions he took was him overcoming the struggle yeah and continuing to move on yeah yeah definitely which is sad that it's how like the ending of his life was how it was if that's the mindset that we have for him and that in this in this part of his life but still yeah um okay so that's a check i would say um does this book give you a uh, provide you with a new way of looking at or approaching life uh I liked I like that we came away with this with the um that idea of needing to to like to one up every, like that be, have it be goal oriented. <laughs> I do. I really do. I, I I I maybe I've been missing that. Maybe I've been missing that ad idea of like surrounding myself with people to to like milestone myself with. Um mm. cuz I'm very your peer group. Yeah. Yeah, well yeah. I mean even even not necessarily a peer group, maybe even a boss or a mentor that kind of sits over top of me that I can learn from. But like right now I, or like within the last little bit, I've either been the only person that does what I do, or I'm kind of the senior of those that do what I do. Mm. Um, so it's just like maybe finding those people that will allow me to, to accelerate. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What about yourself? Yeah, I, I like that. Um, I would say if to think about my life differently, Maybe not so much for me. The experience for reading this book was learning about his life yeah. and and his industry, um, and of course taking some takeaways. So I would say maybe not like a hundred percent of that for me, but I do like the takeaways that you know we've come up with in terms of surrounding ourselves with people who continue to push us and milestone. Sure. Now, what about self reflection? Did it allow you to to make any self reflections? Hmm. That's an interesting one. It kind of goes with the previous one where yes, by extension of our discussion, but yeah. as I was reading the book, I was more thinking about like him, like, oh, this is how, Following I think him. because it's so like he's action oriented, you know, whereas opposed to somebody like who talks a lot about like um, the whys, where then I can apply the why back to myself. This yeah. book was more like, this is how it works here. Mm -hmm. Um, so I would say yes through reflection, but not immediately. Sure. I would, I would give it a yes though, because uh, at least from my end, uh, when, when he, at the beginning of the book, when he does get, um, humiliated at that area, it, at, at Mario's, I feel like it mm -hmm. reminded me of being the arrogant little kid that I've like that. I, I had a little bit of a, I mean, you know, hmm. I, I, that was, I knew that was, was you. That was you back in the day. To an extent, I've had my, I've had my times. I, I really have. I've had my times where I think that I know better than everybody else. I think I'm the smartest mm -hmm. kid in the room, and whether I am or I'm not in that certain situation, having the, having the knowledge. You know what? Wisdom, I'm the exact opposite. Really, you think that you're the not the smartest in the room? Mm -hmm. Why? I don't know how I am. Well, I oh. think I do know why. No, oh. is it a sad reason? No, it's just like how I was brought up, childhood. Oh, I guess that's true. Yeah, it's always like uh, you got to be mindful that somebody else might know better than you. 
Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Which is like something that I, I've recently kind of come to, to to terms with. Like I know what I know, but I also know what I don't know or know that I mm. don't know everything at least. And I mm. think that's something that um, this book also kind of made me self-reflect on a little bit of like, you know, there are times that I know that I've, I've kind of overstepped my own knowledge of like this. I, I, I know what I'm doing or whatever. And then come to find out that I, I really, I've just been BSing the whole thing and not, not really doing it. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd say so, but uh, overall engaging though. Do you find this uh, absolutely this, the book engaging and absolutely uh, lasting memorable. impression memorable? Yeah, mm-hmm. okay, yeah, me as well. Obviously, uh, did you walk away feeling empowered to any extent? Yeah, yes, I think so. In a yeah. way, mm. again, I think like when you which is why I love the show is that these, since, since these, um, these people have written about themselves, I feel like it's almost like an intimate connection we get through reading their book of them and like how they handle life, how they approach life. And through that intimate connection, you know, I feel, I don't know, like for him, for instance, he's so action oriented. And, you know, I, I don't think I would want to rely on um, a motivation of one upping somebody um, because I'm trying to like kind of, again, like temper even my competitive drive a little bit. Maybe maybe I shouldn't, right? But But still, I think like be very aware of where my motivations are coming from. Um, but, you know, like seeing his, his action oriented approach, it's, I think that's inspiring. It's no, like, absolutely. you just, it, you, it's almost like you're immersing yourself in a world of pure action. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> that is true. And it makes you just like, want to go, go do something. You're like, ah, fuck, he's doing something every day. I got to go do things. Yeah. And the amount of stuff he does in a day, oh, yeah. that for what? sure. It's very dishes. Jesus. Yeah. 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 Like a chapter day in the life. Make sure you read that one. But Mm -hmm. it's like, man, from 5 a.m. to midnight, you know, he's just going at it. Yeah. Yeah. Man has no off button. Yeah. Yeah. I've, uh, I were, I I definitely have walked away. The feeling I actually have a story with this. It was funny the other night. Um, I, I cooked for my girlfriend. We did a whole cooking night where I like I was like a chef and like I wore a chef's hat and put Are on. Are you a showing thing. us the pictures here? Or are we gonna intersperse them when we edit? I can Show I them. can add them in. Yeah, I'll, I'll okay. add a picture yeah. of myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's also on my Instagram if you want to look. Like I don't know if you saw it or whatever. Um, but yeah. So right before I went, <laughs> I I like was leaving my house and I just like thought to myself I'm like. This one's for you, Anthony. <laughs> and I walked <laughs> off. <laughs> and I was like, I got to do this right. This one's for you, buddy. For you, Tony. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, well so fine. you can tell that I have like a man crush on this dude, as you can yes. tell. Yeah. Yes. So. He does talk about being a man. So. He does talk. Wait, what? He, yeah, he think he mentioned, he mentions that. Something being about, a man? Like, yeah, or like growing, growing. It's almost like, um, I don't know, this first 20 years of his life. I think he mentions that. I, I forgot where it was. I have it written down somewhere, but we, we're finished with the episode. So, sure. Yeah. Well, yeah. do you want to so do I the outro? See, I, I, thought about, I, thought, I thought about that. I was like, hmm, maybe I can see why. I can see why Alex likes this. Why? Because I need to be a man. I'm not a man. No, I think you like, um, cause you said that about Matthew McConaughey too. What was it like? Um, you got a, um, I forgot what it, I forgot the phrase he used something about like a man's take on the world or something. Yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of, yeah. Which again, sorry that two out of the th- three books we've read were dudes, but, um, oh. maybe then well, next one, one. one out of three wasn't. It's true. And she was an Indian woman. And I mm-hmm. am far from that. So um, <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> I think so. I think yeah. so. I gotta, you know, I got to do some Ancestry.com, 23andMe or something. We'll figure it out. 
<laughs> you have but, 1% Indian. That would be funny. What if? Yo, I'd be like my sister. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all come in here. Be wearing the garb. And you'll be like, Alex, what the fuck are you doing? You'll be like, I don't know, sister. What am I doing? <laughs> oh, we should do that. That would be funny. What's your what's I, your what's your ethnic garb? What would I wear? What would you wear? Um, yeah. That's a good question. I mean, I have Puerto Rican, German, and Native American descendant. So <laughs> take your pick. I could do German. German outfit yeah. stand out. Wear a, you can wear a later later hosen. Or mm-hmm. not later. You'd wear a dirndl. Ah, yes. Yeah. I'll have to look yeah. that up. But I can, I can yeah. envision it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We have a big big jug of gear uh, of beer. A like, boot. Uh, yeah. A boot. Yeah, you get a boot. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> you know what movie, movie I just watched the other day? Willy what? Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. I haven't seen that the in so long. The old one or long. the new one? The old one, the Gene no. Wilder one, of course. Yeah, yeah. He's so I creepy. Was... Yeah, oh. it's so good though. That they, I, I, I forgot about all the little bits that they do out throughout that entire movie. If you haven't seen uh, it in a while, I would recommend. I was just. I, I it love that. Again. My favorite is there's an Oompa Loompa remix that's really good. It's like a techno remix of their song. I'll send oh it to you. my lord! Please do. <laughs> God. Maybe we can include that at the end of this episode if we get permission. That'll be the outro. Episode. Yeah, that'll I be know. the outro. Yeah. <laughs> well, on that note, thank you everybody for listening. Thank you. Hopefully thank you, that you enjoyed the uh, the book Kitchen Confidential by Anthony Bourdain as much as we did. I hope you got a little bit out of this conversation of us talking about a lot of my life and a lot of uh, uh, Priya's life and and trying to figure out life in general. Isn't that mm-hmm. the the whole point? Trying of this, to figure right, out life in general. Yes. Yeah. Right on. So, well if you'd like, uh, give us a follow, give us a like, give it a review, do anything like that. Stick around. Go check out the last episode where we talked about Mindy Kaling's book. What was that book called again, Priya? Why not me? No. No. What is that's it? Her Why is everybody book. hanging out without me? That's yes. what it is. Uh, yeah. Yes, oh, yes. come on, Priya. What the fuck? <laughs> come on. <laughs> you had one job that I th- very randomly threw upon you. <laughs> 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 or you can go back and listen to our first episode of uh, Mr. Matthew McConaughey's Green Lights, where we make a lot of, because we will make a lot of references towards that book, or at least Priya makes a lot of references towards that <laughs> Green book. Green light. <laughs> Green lights. Uh, but anyways, thanks everybody. Uh, give us a, a, and now we'll be a, making references to Bigfoot. Yes. Where's my Bigfoot? Where? Who is your Bigfoot? Find your Who's Bigfoot. Your That's big, your. That is be your, your own your goal. Bigfoot. Be your own Bigfoot. All right, everybody. All right. Peace Talk out. to you soon. Bye.